for loops, you can run the same code multiple times using a loop. The most common loop in JavaScript is called a for loop because it runs for a specific number of times. Here's the structure of the for loop. You always start with the word for, and then you're going to have something in these parentheses. You usually have three items. There's the initialization, and then you put a semicolon. Then you have the condition, and then a semicolon, and then the final expression. And then the, whatever's going to run in the for loop would be in these curly braces over here. Now all of these things are optional, but you have them in most for loops. The initialization is run just once to set up the, the loop variable. And every time the loop is run, the condition statement is evaluated at the beginning. The loop keeps going until the condition is false. And then the final expression is evaluated at the end of each loop iteration and is usually used to increment or decrement your loop counter. Let me give you an example of this. So in this example, first, outside of the for loop, we're going to create an array called our array and set it to an empty array. Now we have the for loop. This is the initialization. We are going to create the variable i and set that i equal to 0. Now here's the condition. i is less than 5. So we are going to keep running the for loop while i is less than 5. So as long as i is less than 5, we'll continue running this for loop. At the end of each run of the loop, we are going to increment i. i plus plus just means we're going to add 1 to i. So it's going to go through the loop the first time. It's going to run this code within the brackets, and it's going to push i onto the, the array. And remember, i starts off with zero, at 0. It's going to push 0 onto the array. And then it's going to increment i. Remember, it does this at the end. So now i is 1. It's going to go through. It's going to push 1 onto the array. It's going to go through, push 2, push 3, push 4. After 4, we'll increment i to 5. Before the for loop goes, it's going to check, is i less than 5? No, i is actually 5. i is not less than 5. So it's going only going to put push the numbers 0 through 4 onto the array. Let's check that out by console.logging it. So yeah, we got the array 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You can also use a break statement to break out of a loop early. So now I have if i is more than 2, break. So if we run that, it's just going to put 0, 1, 2, because after 2, i is more than 2, so it breaks out of the loop, and then we're done with the loop. Now it's also common for loops to iterate through an array. So if an array already exists and has some items in it, we can loop through and uh, console.log or print out each item in that array. So we're going to initialize i to equal 0 if i is less than r.length. So that's the array. And length is the length of the array. So if i is less than the length of the array, we are going to continue going through the array. So once we get to the end of the array, we'll be done with the for loop. At the end, we're going to increment i by 1, and we're just going to console.log r, and then we just put the i variable as the index that we're tr of the array that we're trying to console.log. So the first we're going to get the array index 0, because i will equal 0, and index 0 will be 10. Then we'll do index 1, 2, 3, 4, because each run through the array, we're going to increment i up 1, and that's going to go to the next index of the array. If we run that, see, we got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. If you have a multi-dimensional array, you can use nested for loops to loop through both the array and any sub-arrays. Let me show you an example of that. Okay, so let's look at this. We have this array variable which is a nested array so here's just there's one array there's the beginning of the array and there's the end of the array and inside the array are three other arrays so inside the first array here's index 0 here's index 1 here's index 2 and in each of those indexes is another array so we have index 0 and index 1 in each array so you can use nested for loops to loop through these both arrays. Here's our first for loop. Here's the end of that. And then here's our nested for loop. So we're going to initialize i to 0. If i is less than array.length, and the length of the array, see we have 1, 2, 3. So the length of the array is 3. 
but now inside the nested for loop we have to initialize the variable differently so now instead of i we have j now if j is less than array index i dot length when we're looking at the array index i dot length that's the first item in the array which is the first array within the array so now the length of this is just two we have one two so we're gonna then we're gonna increment j so we're gonna run through this first for loop and inside the first for loop we're basically gonna go into the first array and now we're gonna console.log each item in the first array we're going to array index i index j so the first index is what index in this first array which which would be if we're going to index 0 that's this and then the index j will be what index in the second array in the nested array so we would get index 0 index 1 for j it's going to go through this inner for loop to get both indexes in the first array then it's going to go back to the outer for loop to bump up to this next array and then we're going to go through the inner for loop again to get both in indexes in here and so on if we log if we console.log that it's going to say 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the first 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 was from up here. And then we have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 from down here. Well, those are four loops and nested four loops. Thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, use your coach for good.